planet Earth, this is uh, the second column. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, all the way down. Um, they're very insoluble. Insoluble. They don't decompose very well. Uh, so I'm just going to go through, uh, I'm just going to say a little bit about beryllium. I'll say a little bit about calcium and magnesium. Uh, and that'll be it. So first beryllium, remember it's the one on the top, so it's unique than all the others. It has a slightly higher melting point than the others. It's harder. It doesn't react to air and water, so it's unreactive in our atmosphere for the most part. Uh, it's smallest. You know, as you go up, it's, it's smaller. And uh, as you go up it, in the periodic table, you also increase the ionization energy. So it has a high ionization energy. It can occasionally form beryllium 2+. Plus. Uh, let me show you an example of its structure. It looked like this. So you can get this BeCl2, where the beryllium is sp hybridized. What does sp hybridized mean? There's two bonds, basically, and they're composed of S and P hybrids that mix together. But it's sp hybridized. Uh, but Bl BeCl2 is actually this orthogonal complex where half the Cl's are 90 degrees to the other. And you'll see there's other complexes that also do this. Um, aluminum does something kind of similar. And uh, I'll show you a picture later once we get to that column. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it. Alkali earths can be produced by reduction. They're produced by reduction. Okay. Get back to it. Brilliant. Let's say, uh, let me say a little bit about calcium. Calcium is found uh, in concrete. So if you ever poured concrete with your parents or something in your backyard, uh, that is calcium oxide mixed with sand and gravel and water. Sand, gravel, and water with calcium oxide. Uh, I have some calcium right here. Chalk is a calcium carbonate. So chalk, limestone, the stuff in caves, uh, is uh, calcium. Uh, oh, calcium oxide is also called quicklime. So yeah, you find this in caves, underground caves, things like that. So the slagtites and the slagmites, that's uh, made up of calcium carbonate. Slagtites, the ones on the ceiling. Uh, let me say a little bit about barium, just giving you a couple, couple tidbits of information. Barium is interesting because uh, in an x-ray it's opaque. That means you, if you're doing an x-ray of your body, if you have barium in you, uh, it, uh, you'd be able to see it. Now you don't naturally have it in you, but what they do if they're doing a GI tract x-ray, they'll have you like ingest a, lot, a little barium milkshake so then it goes through your track and you can see how, thing, how things are going down there. Um, or you can have a barium enema, which if you don't know what that is, you can ask your friends. <laughs> or go water skiing and then all of a sudden split your legs and you'll find out what enema is. Um, you find bit calcium, and also I didn't say much about it, but magnesium in, in what's called hard water. Uh, oops, 21. Hard water. Uh, hard water is whenever water has ions that will that are capable of precipitating out of the water. So calcium, magnesium, some of the wells in Davis have tons of very hard water and they make marks. Uh, on your pots and pans and stuff like that. Uh, 
and that's usually a calcium carbonate and a magnesium carbonate, but it could be lots of stuff. So that would be Mg2+, plus, 2+, plus, uh, Ca2+, plus, often with carbonates, but you can have a lot of possibilities It's hard water, but they're common culprits. It can be removed by something called ion exchange. Ion exchange. If you have a soft water thing in your garage, uh, that's an ion exchange unit. And basically what it does is it replaces uh, like Mg2 plus or Ca2 plus with Na plus. Na plus is not hard water, doesn't precipitate out, and so it's not a component of hard water. You can tell the difference between hard water and soft water. Hard water, you don't get sudsy when you soap up in the shower. Uh, it, it very it feels not very not sudsy. If you grew up in an area with a lot of hard water and you go to a place of soft water, it feels like you can't get the soap off of you because it, it gets very sudsy. A uh, hard water replaces that sodium in soap that I talked about to make it less sudsy. Is there a way to do the iron exchange just like on your own? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess you could make something like that if you wanted to. What it basically is, is a column, and this is the thing that would be hard to get if you wanted to do it on yourself. You need something called a zeolite which is uh, basically sand, uh, or if you have a Brita water filter, or pure water filter, that filter in there is charcoal, a charcoal sort of thing in there. It's carbon. It needs little places for the ions to get stuck. And so if you could come up with this like sand sort of substance, uh, what happens is you put in there uh, basically some sodium, and there's other stuff you can put in there, some, some t salt, essentially, sodium chloride. When you pass it through, it switches. The ion switch and the magnesium gets caught, or whatever it is, and sodium uh, replaces it and comes out. So it would be possible to make it, and then you'd have to clean it and that sort of thing and keep replacing the salt the more with the higher volume of water that goes through it. 